does Tai Chi mean? Tai Chi, or the Supreme Ultimate, is a principle which governs the life force of the universe. It brings together the yin and yang energies. Tai Chi is a central axis around which the life force moves. The axis is situated in the heavens, where it is represented by the pole star around which the vault of heaven turns. In the world of martial arts, Tai Chi Chuan, or Supreme Ultimate Boxing, is a form of martial art or a sequence of body movements which takes Tai Chi as its central reference point, regardless of the particular style being practiced. The Tai Chi philosophy is expounded in the Yi Ying, the Book of Transformations, which was written in 500 or 600 BC. Its fundamental principles are linked to yin and yang, five elements and eight trigrams. Tai Chi Chuan grew out of ancient form of combat and fitness techniques. The Chinese nobility first practiced it in the 19th century. It was limited to the nobility, practiced only by selected members, and its secrets were closely guarded. The meaning of the Chinese characters, yin and yang, can be expressed by the two sides of a mountain. Yang is a symbol of the side facing the sun, and yin the symbol of the side in the shade. Yin and yang are the two opposing facets of the mountain, and this applies to the human body as well. Each slope of the mountain is caressed in turn by light, which is a dynamic force and the source of heat and activity, and by shade, which is a source of cold and rest. In Tai Chi, there is a constant interplay between yin and yang movements in a continual search to achieve a balance between the two. A yin movement, whether it be downwards, to the inside, or a gesture which appears to be static, leads naturally into a yang movement. This can be an upwards movement, an outwards movement, or an explosive move, and this in turn leads into another yin movement. Five elements are defined as having taken part in the foundation of the universe. These are represented by earth, metal, water, wood, and fire. The elements interact with one another to produce controlling, life-giving forces. Tai Chi Chuan reflects these five elements in its movements. Metal is reflected by a forward movement. Wood by a backward movement. A turn to the left is indicative of water. A turn to the right of fire. And a centralised static posture reflects the earth. The Yi Ying represented yin and yang by a solid line and a broken line. The Chinese elaborated on this by setting up eight possible threefold combinations expressing the action and interaction of yin and yang. This basic notion of fullness and space, which is highly developed in the art of calligraphy, can also be seen in Tai Chi. The practitioner stands firmly on the earth on both feet, and the Tao dance involves a perpetual interplay in which the body weight is transferred from one foot to the other without loss of balance. The fullness of the whole body is used to sculpt the empty space all around through its movements. Performing a sequence of Tai Chi Chuan movements is a search for life subtleties amongst the thousands of nuances which it offers and an opportunity to simply enjoy the search for perfection which the activity affords. As you set out on this road, you will be embarking on a long and wonderful voyage of self-knowledge and a knowledge of the universe to which we all belong. In order to understand Tai Chi, it is necessary to feel it and to live it. The way in which it symbolically represents the interaction between yin and yang 
expresses a framework in which there are two opposing forces. Tai Chi not only taps into and feels the two opposing forces which run through us, but also searches to achieve a balance between the two. Tai Chi is one of the disciplines which the Chinese practice in order to maintain and improve their health. This form of gymnastics was initially reserved for warriors, but as their million-year culture has evolved, it has been made available to everyone the world over. It has its roots in an ancient philosophy, which forms the basis of all Chinese medicine. which is why the 5,000-year-old Kui Kong, which is concerned with the masterdom of energy, acupuncture, which is based on the meridians in the body through which energy flows, massages and herbal medicine are all part of the Tai Chi Chuan. Stillness, alternating slow, relaxed movements and explosive movements Deep fluid breathing and coordination work are all aspects which are beneficial in staying healthy, and this is why Tai Chi is becoming more and more popular. In Tai Chi, the movements are all circular or spiral and that they express a circular interactivity between the yin and the yang, which are the dynamic life forces. The circular impulse emanates from a three-dimensional movement of the hips to form a figure eight, and it is this movement which is the basis of all the movements in Tai Chi Chuan. The energy is derived from the soles of the feet, passed through the legs, and is then redistributed throughout the rest of the body by the pelvis. By studying these spiral movements, one can master all the possibilities offered by the human body in all their subtlety. The aim of anyone practicing Tai Chi Chuan is to move smoothly and fluidly, mentally visualizing the circles or spirals traced by parts of the body, either separately or together. This visualization brings about a self-awareness and the mental images become tools at our disposal to open the window onto our inner feelings, produced by the circulation of energy flowing through us between heaven and earth. spiral movements, spiral to the side with one hand. Let's start by watching Master Dijun Luijun as he carries out a spiral to each side. This first spiral movement forms the basis of four other movements, which is why it is important to pay special attention here to the movements of the hips.
In the starting position, the right arm is held in front and is bent at shoulder height with the elbow over the right knee. The eyes look in the same direction. Draw your right hip back and down. Bend your knees right down. Your torso turns naturally to face towards the right. Bring your arm round and down in a circle. The right hip now moves back towards the left and the torso follows also turning to the left. The arm continues its circular movement downwards at knee height. The right hip gently comes back up bringing the torso and the arm back to the starting position. Make sure that your right knee does not project further than your right foot and that the left leg does not drop down. The left knee should be relaxed and supple. Begin by bringing your arm round in the circle. The movement is prompted by the right hip, which lifts gently towards the left, before going back, and then down towards the right. The right hip is also tracing a circle. The right hip returns to its starting position, continuing to rock from the back to the front as it comes back up. The left hip moves in the opposing direction. When the right hip goes back, the left hip comes forward. As one hip goes down, the other rises, and the whole sequence is executed smoothly and fluently without any brushed movements. Let's look at some frequent errors which you should avoid. If you do not move your hips, the body seems to be cut into two. The arms move in isolation from the rest of the body, and the legs are too stiff. Although you need to bend down to bring the energy from the ground up into your torso, this movement should not be too exaggerated. If you concentrate on getting the hip movements right, the rest of your body will follow it. Allow your arms to move freely and don't try to force them to move in a circle in front of you. Now, let's practice a whole exercise, moving to the right and to the left at the normal speed.
spiral movement towards the front with one hand. This is a development of the preceding exercise. It is a much wider movement and demands more concentration and more attention to the transfer of the body weight. First, your right arm. Your legs should be more than twice the width of your pelvis apart, with your feet pointing out to the sides. Bend your knees out, the pelvis gently rocks upwards, and your right leg bears more of your body weight. Before you start moving towards the right, place your left hand loosely on your left hip, keeping your arm and shoulders relaxed. Hold your right arm out in front, bent up level with your right shoulder, and with your hand turned over and facing you. Bend your knees a little more, and as you begin to shift your body axis towards your left leg, the right arm traces a wide circle, passing in front of your torso until your body weight is resting more on your left foot. Come back to the starting position and begin again. Before you begin again, make sure that you are positioned correctly. Take care to see that the right knee does not project further than your right foot. Do not straighten out your back leg. The whole movement emanates from the hips. The action of bringing your hips down and back is what gently makes your knees give a little and brings your right arm down towards the ground. In order to bring both the torso and the arm further round, the right hip drops down and this in turn makes the left hip go back and then rise. The left hip is now in a position to take over the spiral movements of the hips moving back and going down a bit further so that the knees bend and the movement is continued. The right hip moving forwards and upwards drives the torso and the right arm through the last part of its trajectory. As the left foot pushes against the ground, the body weight is transferred to the centre and then transfers mainly onto the right foot. The hand which is lifted up does not go above the forehead and as it moves down it goes no lower than the lower abdomen. All the arm movements start at the shoulder and progress to the elbow and the wrist. In this progression, the right arm faces the floor and is controlled by the movement of the hip. The right hand seems to be pushing a cloud towards the left from below. When the body weight transfers from the left foot to the right foot, the palm of the right hand is held up against the space in front and the fingers all equally spread out before returning to the starting position and going on to describe another wide circle. Bend your knees well and bring your shoulders down. Your elbows are pointing down and transmit the movement to the wrists. The movement of the right hip influences the movement of the torso and the arm then follows and gently and fluidly stretches to the left. The knees are relaxed and respond to the change of direction. These are the traps to avoid. The torso and legs should move as one and the movement should not be cut off at the waist.
don't concentrate all your energy on the movement of your right forearm because this is likely to make the arm movement exaggerated and pull the torso round, which in turn will rob the legs of their vitality. Trace a large oval with your right arm slowly and clearly, without stopping. Let's practice a movement now at a normal speed, to the right and to the left. Now the other side. Practice one last time so that you actually feel the figure eight movement inside your body as it caresses both your body and the space around you. Front spiral with both hands in front. The two preceding movements using only one hand can now be combined to make a new movement. The arms move in opposing directions, one arm going up as the other comes down. Imagine that you are holding a large balloon between your hands. Keep your elbows down and your shoulders relaxed. Take care that you are firmly positioned on the floor as you transfer your weight from one foot to the other. Carry out 
the three-dimensional figure eight hip movement so that this movement is transmitted to your torso and the arm being raised. Let's do the same thing again at the normal speed. Spiral to each side with both hands. Bring your left foot out to the side and place both arms out at shoulder height. The palms of your hands are facing one another. Bring your body weight more onto your right foot and bend your knees. Bring your right hip back, along with both arms as though they were linked by an elastic string, and begin to move them to the left. Move them down and across in front of your lower abdomen. As you bring your right hip forward and bend your knees right down, come back up on the left in response to the movement of the left hip, which is moving forward as a result of the right hip moving back in one continuing spiral hip movement. Your eyes should be alert and your hands firm. To carry out this sequence correctly, you have to realize that the line traced by the hips is not a one-dimensional figure eight, but a three-dimensional one, moving horizontally and vertically, as well as up and down. This engenders consistency in the body and allows energy to circulate freely throughout it. 
let's go through the movement quite slowly for a little longer so that you can completely master it. Make sure that your elbows and sides do not enter into the movement. Instead, trace the circle correctly using just your hands. Do not cut the movement off at the waist. Concentrate on the transfer of body weight and the spiralling of the hips. Don't let your hips stick out behind. Keep your balance on a central axis. Take advantage of the fluidity of movement which springs up from the ground and which then spreads out to the very tips of your fingers and your face. Make sure that your legs remain supple and your torso is stretched up towards the sky. We are now going to do the complete sequence again at a normal speed. Now we will do the same exercise going to the left.
spirals to the side and to the back. From the starting position with your legs well apart and your body weight mainly on your left leg. The left hand facing the ground at waist level. The right arm stretched out in front of your shoulder. Bring your left hip down and back, causing your right hip to rise. This moves forward and back in a horizontal figure of eight, leading into a spiral hip movement, which provides the impetus for all the other movements. Your knees should remain flexible and absorb the action by gently bending and straightening up with your knees pointing outwards and this will cause them to trace a circle as well. The torso remains straight and erect without being stiff. Let's do it again. Bring your left hip back and let your knees bend naturally as your torso is drawn to the left and your right arm swings in front of you to the left and is then stretched downwards and to the back on your left. The right hip, in its turn, is pulled back and the movement of the torso carries your right arm up into position. It is lifted up and traces a wide curve to the right. The arms move together and as one goes up, the other comes down. When they pass each other in front of the torso, they trace a figure eight. Each arm traces the shape of the head of the fish in the yin-yang symbol. As you carry out this movement, make your movements wide, sculpting the space which surrounds you in front and behind, as well as above and below. Keep your pelvis loose and let it breathe. If you don't, your legs will be stiff and will be rooted to the ground. As a result, the movement will begin at your waist and the torso and arms will not move correctly. Always pay attention to even the smallest hip movements. They move forwards and back as though dancing to a regular beat. And this is what gives life to all your movements. Take care that you do not exaggerate the hip movements by bringing your hips back too far. This will make your buttocks stick out behind and this will in turn be compensated for by your torso which will tend to lean forward and inevitably make the arm movements incorrect. Another frequent error is to affect the arm movements merely by twisting the torso round from the waist. Bearing all this in mind, let us go through the sequence calmly once again. Constantly try to feel the totality of the whole movement running through your body. Don't forget that the impetus comes from the ground and is then transmitted to the hips and then spreads up to the torso, the arms and the head. The arms are firm but are kept light. Try to maintain a peaceful state of the mind. Let us now calmly go over the same strong and fluid movement at the normal speed.
We are now going to complete a sequence of five spiral movements at the normal speed. We shall begin with spirals to the right side with one hand. Now the other side. Forward facing spirals now with one hand, first to the right and then to the left.
forward spirals now with both hands in front. Spirals to the side, now using both hands, beginning by moving to the right. Now to the left. Finish the sequence calmly with spirals to the sides 
and back. The figure eight is a sequence of eight different movements in the Chen style. It has been designed for learning Tai Chi Chuan and is a perfect way to begin. It is a short form which takes about three minutes. Whatever your level, it is a good idea to practice it since it enables you to work on the essential skills of Tai Chi and this is why you should practice it frequently. Before beginning any exercises, it is necessary to warm up. Let us follow Master de Gion Luigian. Stand with your legs a shoulder width apart, with your hips leaning forwards and your chest hollowed and warm up your hands. Move on to the arm muscles. Gently move the muscles in your neck without straining them. Relax your shoulders. Concentrate on your movements.
spread your arms out for a few moments. Limp up your shoulders, tracing wide circles with your elbows. Now flex your legs at the same time. Bring your fingers of your left hand into the hollow under your shoulder blades and exercise the right arm by tracing wide circles, turning your torso to the right. Now in the opposite direction. Now do the same thing with your other arm. Keep your shoulders straight and do this exercise to warm up your spine. Open up your chest in a series of quick arm movements. Without leaning forward, move your hips round in a circle, making sure that your knees remain flexible. Stretch down as far as you can. Stretch your neck out, keeping your chin close to your chest. Step forward onto your left foot and flex your leg, keeping your left foot straight. Now the other leg. The knee of your back leg should not be stretched out and your torso should be quite straight. Now we shall move on to some exercises for the hips. Move your knees round in opposing circles without straining. With your legs a little apart and your hands on your thighs, bring your knees round in wide circles.
Bring your feet back together and this time move both knees round in the same direction. Finish the warm-up exercises by moving your wrists and ankles together. The figure eight. This exercise requires a good deal of concentration. Your body should be stretched up to the sky. Look straight ahead of you. Your head is hanging on a thread. Bring your chest in, relax your pelvis towards the front and gently bend your knees. The Guardian of the Skies uses a pestle and mortar. Let us look at the first sequence. Here we can see the movements from the front and from the back. Now carry it out. Transfer your body weight onto your right foot so that your left leg is free to lift up and to step a shoulder width apart. The body weight is then redistributed evenly onto both feet which are parallel. Relax your hips so that your knees bend. Then lift your arms up slowly until they are level with your shoulders without letting your elbows hang down and keep the palms of your hands outstretched. Bring your hands down level with your lower abdomen. Go up leading with back of your hand and come down with the palms of your hand. Always maintain the same relationship between your hands, your shoulders and your hips during this movement, which flows from your shoulders to your elbows and then to your hands. Bring your arms to rest when they are in front of each hip. The left hand is higher than the right hand. Relax and draw your left hip back, which brings your body round to the left, as though you were carrying a balloon. The right hand is level with a point just below your right breast and the back of your hand is turned towards your face. Both elbows are relaxed and parallel with the ground and there is no tension in your shoulders. Transfer your body weight to the left foot and stretch your hands to the right. Relax your left hip and turn your body to the right as you pivot both arms so that your hands are facing one another at the same distance from one another. Without pausing, step out with your right foot and rest on the heel so that your body is free to turn to the right. Follow the movement by turning to look in the same direction. Bring your left hip well back to trace a figure eight. 
As soon as you have taken a large step to the side, transfer your body weight onto your right foot so that your left leg is free to lift up. Bring your left heel down on the floor in a wide step as you stretch your arms back. Your body should rest on both legs and your knee should bend before you stretch your right leg out and push against the ground. Step out with your left leg and bring your left hip back, drawing your torso and then your arms into a step forward. Turn your body to the right, relax your spine, bring your weight forward onto your left foot. Slowly bring your hands apart. The left hand moves in a circle. Bring your right foot back to your left and your right hand onto your left. Lift your right fist and your right knee together in a swift movement. And bring your fist down as you stamp on the ground with your right foot. The right arm and leg move together. They are both raised and then come down together as your body weight rocks back onto the left leg and is then distributed evenly on both legs. Let us do it again with the instructor. Loosely tie your clothing. Let us now watch Master Di Gion Luigian as he practices. Let us concentrate on the second sequence. Your body turns to the left as your two hands cross over and then separate, the left hand turning towards the ground and the right one turning up to the sky. Bring your hands apart, the right hand tracing a circle upwards and out and the left one moving down and inwards, keeping your body weight over your right leg. Then with your weight on your left foot, Cross your hands in front of your chest with your left hand on top. Turn to the left by relaxing the left hip first. As you transfer your weight to the right, relax your right hip. Stretch out both your hands and transfer the weight to your right. The right hand traces a curve at shoulder height 
with the palm of the hand facing your opponent. The left hand rests on your left hip. Let's begin again from the beginning. Your right fist is clenched at first and you open up your hand as you slide it over your left forearm. The movement of the left hip going back and the right hip coming forward has the effect of gently turning the torso. The left hand finishes underneath the right elbow, your body weight predominantly on your left leg. In a wide circular movement beginning at the centre of your body, your right arm pushes outwards and up as the left arm pushes inwards and downwards. These two opposing arm movements are carried out smoothly due to the transfer of the body weight from one foot to the other. With your left hand raised, step out with your right foot and adopt the posture of a horseman with your knees pointing outward and your pelvis raised slightly forward. Bring back your left hip to make your torso turn to the left. Then bring back your right hip to draw your torso towards the right, bending your knees down deeply so that your legs absorb and bring life to the spiralling movement of the pelvis. The right arm takes up its position, opening up the torso towards the right, whilst the left hand, which has a much shorter movement, moves slowly to the left hip. The shoulders are well down and the back very open. This movement comes to an end when the hips return to the same level as they were in the horseman's posture. The right arm is well stretched out, the elbow slightly bent, the wrist lifted up a little, the fingers of the hand which is crossing over point up to the sky, whereas the tips of the fingers on the left hand are placed on the hip. Gently push your hips downwards towards the ground. Gaze out towards the distant horizon in front of you, over the tips of your fingers, and gently bring your chin in. Let us repeat the whole movement as one complete sequence without a break. Follow the instructor from behind. Seal six passages of attack and close off all four sides. Let us take a moment to study the third movement. Now let us practice it with the master de Gion Luigian. Transfer your body weight onto your right foot and then onto your left and finally to your right so that your left foot can move in with the heel raised off the floor. Bring both arms well curved inwards around your body, level with your stomach to repel your opponent. Let us look at the movement again in detail. First, relax your left hip. Bring both arms to the right. With your body weight, principally on your right foot, your right hand is over the top of your left hand and you push with both hands. The right foot pushes against the ground at the same time. Bend your knees right down. The hips are going to trace a spiral. Begin by bringing your right hip forward and your left hip back. The body and the torso rocks backwards and forwards. 
on account of the spiralling hip movement and have turned towards the left. Bring your left hip cleanly back and rest predominantly on your right foot, squatting down a little. Bring your arms out to trace a wide circle downwards and to the left. When both arms are at shoulder level, turn the palm of your left hand up towards the sky. Continue to move both arms up together. Trace a wide circle and come down across your torso. Push out with both hands close together. With your palms uppermost, your wrists bent, your elbows parallel with the ground and your shoulders relaxed. As the movement comes to an end, push your arms out straight from the shoulder to repel your opponent. Stretch your body up to the sky as you push against the ground with the toes of your left foot lifting your heel off the floor and bending your left knee outwards with your weight predominantly on your right leg. Let us now do the third part of the sequence. First watch Master Tiju and Luijin from behind. The simple whip. Look how smooth the movement is. Now let's try it. The right hip goes back and draws the torso along in the same direction as both arms turn inwards. The right hand closes like a pair of sugar tongs to pull a thread of silk out of the center of the left hand, the fingertips of which are touching the navel. The left arm moves forwards and pushes outwards as the left leg steps forward. With your body weight on your right leg, Step out wildly to the side with your left leg, keeping the toes of your right foot turned outwards as you trace a small circle from the centre to the side of your body with your left arm. The left hand comes back to join the right in a smooth wide movement with the palm of the hand facing the body. The left hip swings backwards and then forwards, drawing the torso and the left arm to the right. The knees are kept supple. Then without a pause, the hand turns to ward off your opponent, pushing him to the left with the middle of your forearm. The eyes gaze into affinity over the cutting edge of your hand. Let us now look at the simple whip from the beginning. Bring your right hip back just as though your torso and your pelvis were being pushed back to the right by the middle of your left hand. Both arms move inwards, prompted by the elbows, which press and lean towards the center. As always, the whole movement begins at the hips. Next, the right elbow points upwards to stretch the arm out and deal a blow to the opponent with the back of the closed hand, since only the tips of each finger are together. Note that the right arm is extended in one continuous movement and not in a swift forward movement as if you were repelling someone with your right hand. For this reason, you should always keep your eyes fixed towards the right. Rest your body weight on your right leg so that the left one is free to move. Lift your knee up and trace a small inward circle before stretching your left leg out and taking a large step to the side. The foot should face outwards. The left arm also moves round in a circle, brushing against your stomach. Once the left foot is firmly back on the floor, the body weight is transferred from your right leg to your left. The left knee is bent right down, whereas the right leg is more stretched out. 
driven by the spiral movements of the hips, both the torso and the left arm turn towards the left, and the left hand is spread out in front. All the energy comes from the right foot, which presses against the ground, the leg being stretched out, but not stiff. Let's go over it again. In one continuous movement, push against the ground with your right foot and open up the space in front of you with your left arm. To finish the simple whip movement, distribute your body weight evenly on both legs. With your knees bent and gently hold your arms up, gaze it into the distance beyond your left hand. Let's look at the complete movement without a pause. the four essential principles to the left and to the right. Let's now look closely at the four basic movements. The left hip provides the momentum to turn the top half of the body to the left and then to the right and the arms move in a wide sweep, moving round level with the right knee and ending up in parallel with the palms of the hands facing the opponent. The fingers of the right hand are at shoulder level and the right foot is pressing against the ground. The right leg is stretched and the left leg well bent. The transfer of weight to the right leg puts your opponent off balance. As you push him away with your right hand resting on your left forearm, the right foot presses down on the ground so that your body weight can be transferred onto your front foot. You then prepare to strike by squatting down over your right heel. Move your arms apart to slightly lift your opponent so that you can push him down harder and throw him to the right using the palms of your hands. Let us go back to the beginning of the sequence. Start by sweeping both arms round in a circular movement, moving them away from your pelvis from left to right to protect yourself from your opponent. The strength of the spiral hip movement forces the torso and arms to simultaneously turn to the left. The arm movement is staggered as the arms rise, the left hand preceding the right one. Once the left hand is level with the left shoulder, the right hand pushes towards the left, using the inside of the hand, directly in front of the navel. 70% of the body weight is now on the left foot. Both arms come together on the right hand side at shoulder height. The palms turn towards one another to drag the opponent from left to right and throw him to the right. As you transfer your body weight from the left to the right foot. The action of bringing your right hip back and pressing down on the ground using your right leg creates the energy for these movements which spreads right out to the very tips of your fingers. The left hip moves back and down making the knees bend further down 
you transfer your body weight to your right foot and stretch both arms down to the right. Here too, it is the pelvis which governs the whole movement. The right hip dropping down and the left hip moving forward. The hands echo the figure of eight traced by the hips. In one continuous movement, the right arm moves inwards and presses against the left forearm at shoulder height. The back leg presses hard against the ground. The hands move apart as if they were being lifted up by a wave and they continue to rise because of the circular action of the pelvis. The movement ends with the hands pushing downwards again. They gain in depth because the knees have been bent right down. This is the result of a very small hip movement in which the pelvis moves down again and from left to right. Let us go over the four essential principles of Tai Chi Chan. Pen to the left, parrying to the left. Lu to the right, throwing to the right. Qi to the left, pressing the left forearm with the right hand. And to the right, pushing towards the right. We shall now do the same movement, this time moving to the left. Bring your left hip well back and step forwards onto your left heel so that your right leg can push against the ground. Move your body weight onto your left foot to allow your right leg to move freely. Stand up straight and raise your right knee up until it is level with your hip. Bend your knees right down and put your body weight predominantly on your right foot. Move your hips round in a spiral, which will make both your legs and your torso turn towards the left. And finally, raise your right knee until it is level with your right hip. Stand firmly on your left leg. Parry with your right hand, pointing the cutting edge towards your opponent. Your right arm rounded in front of you at shoulder height as your left hand, which is pointing upwards, turns to be another opponent to parry once again. With your body weight resting on your left leg, bring your right heel down as you take a large step to the side and back and step forwards onto your right foot. The impetus is again coming from the spiral hip movement, the right hip moving back and the left hip moving forward. We run over the four essential principles as they apply to the movement towards the right. Pen parrying to the right. Lu throwing to the left. Qi pressing to the left. And pushing to the left. Look at how fluid this movement is when it is carried out at the normal speed.
rolling your arms back. Let us watch the instructor carefully. The left hip gently rocks backwards and then forwards, sending a wave up into the torso and spreading the arms out to the sides. The body weight is transferred from left to right as the body opens up and the arms roll round from the shoulders to look towards the right. The knees are well bent. The centre of gravity is resting in the centre evenly over both legs. As the right hand rises, bringing the fingers level with the eyes and the left hand turns up towards the sky. Both the elbows and the shoulders are relaxed. The left heel is lifted off the floor so that the left leg is free to take a large step to the left. The arms spread out again, the right arm preceding the left. The right arm is stretched in a straight line from the shoulder with the hand lifted up. The left hand, which is in place in front, of the left hip describes a wide circle to the left. And both arms then simultaneously fold in on one another facing the sky. The body weight is evenly distributed over both legs. The left elbow bends as the body weight is transferred to the left leg, freeing the right leg which takes a step backwards. The pelvis as always provides the driving force for this movement. For this reason, it is a good idea to concentrate once again on the spiralling movement of the hips. Bring the left hip back, bend the knees well down, and spread your arms out to the sides. Bring the left hip forward, causing the torso to turn to the right. Both arms move simultaneously. Transfer all your weight onto the left foot. Lift your right heel off the floor. Cross your arms over, with the elbows pointing downwards. Free your right leg and stretch it out behind you, brushing the ground. When the right foot passes the other leg, it almost touches it, and this applies each time you take a step. Look how the arm movement is prompted by the hips. The hands move apart because the torso turns towards the right, as a result of the hip movement. Your left arm which is slightly curved, is brought up quite quickly. The right hand faces the floor and is level with the navel. We'll go through the whole movement again from the beginning, watching it from behind. The whole movement begins at the hips, the right hip gently coming forward and then going well back. This opens up the torso by spreading out the arms. The right hand stays in front of the right hip and the arm is slightly curved whereas the left arm is stretched well out. With the elbow relaxed, the wrist well bent to ward off an attack by an opponent. Roll your arms back and step back onto the left leg first. Roll your arms and step back vertically onto your right foot with your hands crossed over in front. Take a second step to the left onto your left foot and push with your right arm. The rolling movement of the arms is also prompted by the spiralling hip movement and leads into the backward step taken by the right leg. Watch these three steps backward in one continuous sequence. To get a better idea, 
follow Master to Ju and Luijin in the screen on the right. Covering the hand and the forward punch. Watch a demonstration by the instructor. Bend your knees down deeply and come back up, spreading your arms out to each side. Bring your arms back in front. The two arms in this instant work individually. The right hand is clenched to form a fist on a level with the stomach and the right elbow is held close to the right side. The left arm is stretched out in front with the fingers pointing upwards towards your opponent. The right fist remains close to the body as the left arm rolls inwards. The right hip produces an explosion of energy to power the punch by the right fist making the torso turn slightly to the left. The eyes are fixed on a point beyond the clenched fist, the arm forming a straight line from the shoulder. Let us look at it again. Push with your arms as they spread out to each side. Bring back the right hip, drawing your arms inwards. Clench the fist of your right hand and use your left hand to ward off your opponent. The right fist stays close to the body. The knees bend right down to each side directly over the toes. In a rapid movement, the right hip swings back and then forwards to produce an explosion of energy, pulling the torso towards the left and transferring most of the body weight onto the left leg. The right leg is pushing hard against the ground and it is therefore more extended than the left leg. Let us practice all the movements in a continuous sequence. Flowers of the plum tree are carried away by the wind. Let us now watch the last sequence. The hip is drawn back and then forward and turns the torso towards the left leg. The hands are crossed over one another in front of the chest with the left hand on top of the right, the right hand being turned outwards. The left foot is turned inwards. The right foot moves over. The right fist is simultaneously brought down onto the left hand as the right foot stamps on the ground. Let's do it again with Master Dijuan Luijin.
closure. Let us now watch the closure of the figure eight. Relax your hips and bend your knees. Roll your arms out to the sides. As your knees gently straighten up, your palms face downwards and your hands then return to the central axis of your body. Bring your feet together by bringing your left foot back. With your chest hollow and your head suspended on a thread, look into the far distance in front of you and breathe in calmly and deeply. Let us watch the closure again. This is something which you should do each time you finish a Tai Chi Chuan sequence or movement. <laughs> 